Welcome back to Live Now from Fox 643 here on the East Coast. And this Wednesday morning, we are following some breaking news at this hour. We are learning that the Taiwanese company Gold Apollo, they released early this Wednesday morning that they authorized their brand on the pagers that exploded in Lebanon and Syria. This happening in an apparent Israeli operation targeting Hezbollah's communications network. But that another company based in Budapest manufactured them. Pagers used by the militant group Hezbollah exploded uh, near simultaneously Tuesday in Lebanon and Syria, killing at least nine people, including an eight-year-old girl and wounding nearly 3,000. Joining us live this morning to further discuss this news alert is Dr. Asaf Ramarwaski, the Executive Director of Scholars for Peace in the Middle East. Good morning to you, Dr. Asaf. Thank you so much for being here. Good morning. Thank you for having me. Uh, so we continue to follow breaking news as it relates to the conflict in the Middle East. Uh, this just further showing that the conflict with Israel and Hezbollah has ramped up. For those I'm unfamiliar with the details, if you could first catch us up with what you know on your end, please. Sure. Thank you, as always, for having me. So let's contextualize what took place here. I mean, from when a parent from an Israeli, uh, if the Israelis indeed take responsibility for this as a uh, phenomenal intelligence success, um, simultaneously, as you mentioned, uh, close to, they're estimating about 3,000 pagers that went off at the same time uh, as far as targeting Hezbollah leadership. Um, this was a sophisticated intelligence operation uh, whereby it shows that the Israelis were able to infiltrate into the communication system of Hezbollah all along. It has been known uh, all along that came out of uh, the CEO of Hezbollah, Hassan Nasrallah, that there were uh, demands that no Hezbollah leadership to be walking around with uh, smartphones, especially cellular phones, because they had they were on alert array that this is something Israelis could penetrate uh, and getting and getting into. So even even Nasrallah himself says he doesn't wear or doesn't carry a cell phone on him exactly for that reason. So what you have here is really uh, a validation that even going low tech, uh, the Israelis are able to penetrate into pagers. Uh, what that means, actually, that the Israelis were also able, if indeed uh, confirmed, uh, were able to get you know into the companies that sold the pagers, uh, put, penetrate and puncture the, uh, the 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 actual devices themselves, and simultaneously you know uh, basically uh, fire them up in one way, shape, or form at at, a, at any given time, and that's to show Hezbollah that indeed. Uh, they are ready to do business. They, you know, this is for the past few weeks now. Ever since the assassination that the Israelis took place, uh, confirmed of uh, the chief of staff of Hezbollah, Fuad Shukr, uh, who was responsible, one of the key people responsible for the bombing of the the Marine barracks in Beirut back in 1983. Uh, there has been an ongoing barrage of rockets in coming from the north. Uh, into Israel, all the way into areas of Tiberias near the Sea of Galilee. And so there has been ongoing barrage of this rockets. Uh, Israel had to relocate close to 80 to 90,000 uh, citizens of the state of Israel. And so this war has ratcheted up and continues. Uh, they've been waiting on alert, so-called that Hezbollah is going to retaliate. Uh, and instead of uh, waiting around, uh, they decided, I think, in a very smart way here to go on the offensive and to make sure that they are continuing. This is not tolerable. Uh, we can find you. Uh, and we know how to do it well. Uh, I mean, and that's really the message uh, that was sent clearly uh, to Hezbollah's leadership. The immediate response, of course, was that, you know, Israel was responsible for this, notwithstanding whether or not Israel took responsibility for it or not. But that was the messaging that came out of Hezbollah yesterday. Yeah, and Dr. Asaf, really briefly, um, as we went to this interview, uh, Lebanon's health ministry has increased that death toll from 9 to 12, so did want to put that out. But um, getting back to what you just mentioned uh, about this infiltration of the electronic system, we've seen it with Israel and Hamas, right, as far as Hamas putting those bombs inside of stuffed animals that little kids were um, holding and running around with out in Gaza. And now we are seeing this with um, the electronic system. I want to ask you, though, are there concerns 
concerns of, from either side that more entities are participating in this as far as we are seeing this electronic infiltration because I know at one point there were concerns that maybe Egypt might be doing something, but now we are looking at a Taiwan's company as this manufacturing company um, is at the um, focal point of this situation. Are there concerns of other world leaders or other countries participating in this? A hundred percent. I mean, first of all, let's also make it clear that uh, Hezbollah is a direct arm of the Islamic Republic of Iran. Any one of Iranian proxies uh, smuggling as far as hard cash, uh, Hezbollah has um, enterprises and businesses all the way to South America using NACRO dollars and Bitcoin. And so it may not even be direct parties, but third parties uh, that are purchasing technology. Uh, they have the money to do this. They have the capability to do this. And they have the network to do so by Iran's affiliates. So when you're talking about the uh, patrons of what started 10-7, and again, the Israelis have been at war with Hezbollah uh, since 10-8. I mean, this has been a coordinated effort in the north and in the south, Hamas and Hezbollah. So all of these countries, going back to Turkey, Malaysia, Lebanon, uh, Iran, uh, I mean, again, we talk about Iran, you have to also talk about the fact there is Russian and Chinese influence and where that's coming from. So there has been uh, a plethora of opportunities uh, that feeds into the financial and technical arteries of these organizations to allow them to thrive. Um, when it comes to your point about Egypt, that's exactly what the lifeline that's allowing Hamas to thrive because the tunnels that are coming in on the Philadelphia route are coming from the Egyptian side. So you, they do have large patrons, sponsorship as far as state-sponsored terrorism of these organizations, and combined with the politics and the technology, they're able to infiltrate that. What was also put out yesterday that it is clear that there was an attempted assassination uh, last year inside of Israel, revealed by um, by intelligence sources uh, against uh, and his former Israeli chief of staff, uh, Bugi Alon. Uh, again, they, the leadership of Hezbollah, uh, they are trying to go after uh, Israeli leadership and key individuals. Uh, and here you are, Israel is going on to the offensive, uh, making clear that all the people who have blood on their hands and are responsible for this very war that we're still fighting now, almost a year later, uh, uh, October 7th will be a year since the war began, they are going to be held responsible and Israel will continue to do this, knowing and showing them that there is nowhere they can hide. The Israelis uh, will indeed find them in conjunction, hopefully, with other uh, intelligence agencies who are working to crack down on worldwide terrorism. Dr. Asaf, as new information continues to come out, um, we are getting preliminary reports, but as new information comes out this morning, there's the concern of retaliation and what that retaliation might look like from Hezbollah and even Iran. What does that look like from your vantage point? Uh, the Israelis are expecting for sure retaliation. I mean, I think that, that that's been a given for the past uh, for the past weeks now. As I mentioned, uh, rockets are coming in. Uh, I think that uh, there's going to be an acceleration of the military activity uh, for sure. There's been this debate inside of Israel and within the military apparatus for the past uh, few weeks now. Of not, you know, most of the attacks that have come from Israel have come from air force surgical attacks that have coming in. Uh, when we're talking about going in in uh, to areas of Beirut and area and other areas where Hezbollah is based as far as boots on the ground, that will be the next level. Uh, let's put it into context as well. It's critical to remind your viewers that, of course, Hezbollah has violated um, the, seven, the UN Resolution 1701, going back to how they have moved beyond the, uh, the, the border as far as the Latani River. Uh, every time they move that needle going forward, that is an act of war. Uh, as far as the Israelis are concerned, uh, and the Israelis are going to do whatever they can to push them to the, the beyond the Latani River uh, in order to maintain a safe and secure buffer zone 
on that northern border. Uh, this is an untenable situation for the Israelis, uh, and this is what we've been talking about for a very long time. Uh, Hezbollah, since the beginning, has been trying to see how Israel was going to respond in their attacks, uh, flexing their muscles as far as holding on to fronts on two areas as far as the south and the north. Uh, there is no doubt that this war is going to continue now, and Hezbollah is uh, continuing and actually proceeding exactly in tandem of where Hamas is. So this is exactly the goal. And as I said, I mean, the Israelis have had a ready to relocate citizens. Again, untenable situation. They need to restore back one deterrence, which they exercised yesterday vis-a-vis -vis the intelligence, but also safety and security um, for their citizens living up north who have not even been able to send their kids to school since the school year began, since they've all been re relocated uh, to other areas inside of Israel and central parts of Israel as a result of the war. Dr. Asaf, thank you so much for your candidness and your expertise on this topic. I hope you enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you as always.